All right, and we are back with another edition of Lunch with a Lawyer live Facebook. And today's guests are special because this is the first time I think in Bosnian history that we've got a movement like this. And today with me is Dr. Nedim Durakovic and Slajana Novi. Um, they are members, I guess, are you board members as well uh, for Platforma for Progress? And you guys go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit to our audiences and then we can go ahead and talk about platform because I think that that's what most people want to know sure. more about. Sure. Uh, Neden Durakovic, I'm born in Mostar, uh, moved to the United States in 1994, moved to Minnesota, uh, finished school in the United States, moved to St. Louis for residency and here practicing as a otolaryngologist. Slajana. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, I'm Slajana Novi. Uh, yes, I'm Rodjana u Bratuncu. Oh, I'm sorry. I That's forgot. okay. I think most of our listeners are going to be able to switch back and forth. It doesn't really matter. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was born uh, back in Bosnia. I was born in Bratuncu. And during the war, we got uh, moved. Or we were refugees in mm -hmm. our own country. So we were um, moved over to Banovici. And I got, we were there for a while. I finished high school there. I got married. Then we come over to the United States. And I got two kids and a husband. Currently not working. So. And what most people probably don't know about you is that you are Addis Abdi's sister, my very good friend, chiropractor, and my uh, podcast, Boston American Professionals podcast. We've got that going on as well. Yeah, my cool was my there. Husband. And so you guys are members of Platforma the Progress in St. Louis, correct? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, that's correct. And let's talk a little bit about Platforma. Let's let's start with Mirsa. What can you guys tell us about Mirsa Hajikadic? Uh, I've known uh, Professor Hajikadic since our early days when we came to the United States before he was before the platform existed or anything like that. And he was always a, a leader in our community, uh, in the Bosnian-American diaspora. And he always worked very, very hard, uh, gave his time to the community to try and better both Bosnia and, and our community here. So I knew him before any of this started. So when he started this movement, I knew right away that there was a, a good person was in charge. And then as he spoke about um, what what he was trying to do and what he was trying to change and how he devoted himself to do this. Um, it, it just became a natural draw, I think, for everybody. Um, what took the diaspora so long to have somebody like Mirsa come out? It's, it's a great question. And I, I think he's, he's kind of a once in a lifetime type of person. Not, not that we're trying to idolize him or anything like that, but there, there are very few people who have had success both in Bosnia and in the United States and can bridge those two worlds. A lot of people who were born in Bosnia and lived in Bosnia and have success there, they might not be able to communicate with the Bosnian American community here. And then uh, there are other people who were born here, went to top schools, uh, finished, you know, have great careers, but can't talk to the community in Bosnia. So he's, he's one of the few individuals that can actually bridge that gap really well. Uh, and, and, you know, it's about time. I think people people are just sick and tired of complaining and inaction. So, okay, Slajan, what drew you to the platform? Okay, uh, uh, first I was introduced after the uh, voting took place in Bosnia, but um, I didn't pay much attention before that. But um, we were watching the uh, Bosnian channels. Mm -hmm. We are really fond of Senat Hajj Faisalic. Yeah. We watch and face all the time. So professor was a guest on his face-to-face, um, -face, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And we really liked the guy, my husband and myself. So we start researching and, you know, getting introduced into platforma. And then uh, I met a person, our great friend, Mersada. Yeah, <laughs> and she met per, uh, professor in person. She knew him. And she was telling me about him and everything, and that's when uh, everything started. She mm -hmm. started uh, the platform here in St. Louis, mm -hmm. and we were meeting at her house all the time, all of us. 
It started with like yeah. five people and yeah. there's like 70 of us. Now. There's 70 of you guys here in St. Louis. Louis and what's amazing, we didn't know each other no. okay. for the most part. I don't no. know, Miss Sada, she just emailed me. I said, oh, I'm busy this week. And she's like, you have to come. We need you. And she emailed you. She emailed yeah. everyone and kind of pulled everyone together. And That's great. That's great. So let, let's, yeah. Like, that's yeah. Right. So let's let's yeah. talk a little bit about the numbers behind the diaspora and then the numbers behind the voting diaspora. Yeah. So oh. what's the numbers that you guys yes. have? That? So I'll, I'll ask you, what do you? How many people do you think from the entire diaspora in the United States, Bosnian Americans, voted, or in general will vote in a Bosnian election? How well, the, the last number that I had was like three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah, that, that that was kind of how many, I, an eye yeah. opener, and I think like three hundred from St. Louis or something. Can you believe it? And that, that was that was kind of a, I don't know, a disappointing statistics then. Yeah. Um, and so, well, what what are the numbers? What do you guys have in your database? How many Bosnians or Bosnian Americans are in the United States that are also eligible to vote? I guess. That's a good question. I don't know what the total is for eligible to vote, but if we say say St. Louis, for example, there are fifty to sixty thousand Bosnians. Mm -hmm. The statistics vary, but I think they're in that range. And if you figure, let's say half of those. Yeah. Are, are adults voting age so you know 25,000 already there we would quadruple more than quadruple the number of the entire US population that voted in the election in Bosnia and it, it's just eye-opening because you know if if we don't vote then we're not relevant we're not relevant to politicians in Bosnia and we're not relevant in the democratic process there and that's kind of my my wife and I have been, you know, kind of tossing this question in, in, in you know, our conversations back and mm -hmm. forth. And we have not been back to Bosnia since 2014. You know, obviously we had a little kid and, you know, yeah. jobs and all that stuff. And I think a lot of the diaspora doesn't get to Bosnia every year. Maybe every other year, yeah. some of them don't go at all. Yeah. Others are, you know, just very infrequent. Mm -hmm. And then the question arises, if all of those people voted, they could make a change in Bosnia. There's no mm -hmm. question about it. Mm -hmm. But is that fair? Is it fair that somebody that doesn't go to Bosnia a lot makes a difference to, yeah. to Bosnia? Uh, I I had this question posed the other day by a senior person in our Bosnian American community here as well. And I think it's a relevant question to ask because some people say, well, you don't live there. Why should you make decisions about what goes on there? But I think from the war, a lot of terrible things happen. And that changed Bosnia forever, changed each of our individual lives, forever changed because of the war. But I think the true strength that we got from the war, that Bosnian got, that no other country in that area has, is the diaspora. We, all of us, came to different countries. We learned different skills, different languages, different ways of life. And now we are ready to give that back to Bosnia. And we have to be involved in that process. Otherwise, we lose a part of ourselves our kids, if they don't know what, what Bosnia is or the Bosnian language, who are they going to become? Bosnia will be irrelevant to them. And same thing for Bosnia. They rely on us. They, they, they don't need our money. You know, we, a lot of us contribute funds and we have since the end of the war, nonstop. But they really need our ideas and our participation in the democratic process. That's what Bosnia lacks. I mean, it, it, it's mind boggling the, the, the political system that exists there. From what I'm, from what I'm hearing and, and, and reading, it's the most complex sis, political system in the world. Is that yeah. still true? To, to, I mean, we don't even live there, and we're frustrated by it. Yeah. We live here. So, for example, one thing that we're very active about is getting people registered to uh, get their passports, get their identity cards, so they can actually vote. The voting process for people in the diaspora is impossible. So, for example, if you were ethnically cleansed from Srebrenica, you don't have a home there anymore, and you need to get an identification card, and you go, you go back, and you're staying at a hotel, and you go to the government office, and they say, oh, you, you need a permanent address here in order to register to vote. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's ethnic cleansing in the modern day. You lose your voice because you don't have the home of your childhood that somebody took from you. And we can't allow that to happen in our present day when we're educated, when, you know, we can work together. And when we have in St. Louis 50,000 of us that can say, no, every, every person who is a Bosnian citizen has a right to vote there. Okay. 
So let's kind of lead into how's platform uh, the progress different from all the gazillion other, you know, political parties that are currently, you know, active in, in, in Bosnian politics. Yeah, I, I think it's a great question. Pleasure, do you want to? Yeah, uh, um, uh, I think that's the only uh, political party. It's really, let's say, it is a political party that is uh, including everyone. That I felt included in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My family, you probably don't know, but we are all mixed up, all different religions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And whenever I go to some other political parties, I don't, I don't feel included because it's all about one. It's let's face it, the political parties in Bosnia are about religion, mm -hmm. and they all faced like that. So uh, I felt really included in platform. Even these people that I'm that every other week that we are hanging around, you, you can tell who's who. Everybody felt included mm -hmm. and everybody's treated with respect and dignity. And that's the most important thing for me. So you're saying that the platform for progress uh, mirrors, you know, the multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious Bosnia and Herzegovina the way it should be, right? Yes. That is, that is, that is and, and I think, you know, a lot of people say, oh, how are you different from this party or that party or, or you know, what piece of the pie are you going to collect of, mm -hmm. of the voting populace? But I think what's great about platform is it engages people to participate in the democratic process in Bosnia that other parties never really cared about. Other parties didn't come to St. Louis. I never participated in any political party. And I don't almost see this even as a political movement. I see this as a, as um, you know, engaging our, our diaspora to vote, even a simple act as that. And that's not a partisan movement. That's just engaged in the democratic process. And other parties were just not interested in that. So your overreaching goal is going to be get as many people registered to vote as possible, and then when it comes yeah. to the voting, hey, you know, it's, That's it's, your, it's, your, it's your choice. You vote yeah. for whoever you think is the right candidate out there. Um, what is the platform of Platform of the Progress? What are the key elements that they differentiate themselves from the other parties when it comes to improving the situation in Bosnia? Yeah, I, I think a big one is um, transparency. So, for example, they don't collect funds from the state. They purely collected from donations from, from members. Um, they don't rely on um, appointing people based off of their um, political influence or, you know, so for example, if you have a, if you have a business, say the air, one of the airports in Bosnia, mm -hmm. each time there's a new head of the political system, they appoint their own party member to head that airport. Not because of their knowledge about airplanes or airports, it's because they're they're high up in the political ranks. That's not that doesn't lean itself to an airport running wall. And I, I think it just it's that day to day mindset of being very transparent. So in appointing people that are actually good at their jobs, not at not their you know family relationship or or whatever it may be. Honesty. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about what you know. It's not who you know anymore. Yes. I mean, come on. Yeah. 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 You want to change that? that? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. That's gonna be tough. But that kind of leads. Me, yeah. But that, that that kind of leads me to the next question. So let's assume tomorrow the elections come around and platform uh, the progress wins in a landslide. Considering the political system, what are the chances of some change being created through that? I, I think it'll be huge if we can say. And not even considering the platform, if we can say in St. Louis, we went from, you know, 300 people voting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Pretty, it's a pretty low bar to having, you know, say 10,000 people voting. All of a sudden, St. Louis becomes relevant in the, in the political landscape of, of Bosnia, where, you know, 500,000 people vote in an election. And then if we connect, if we, you know, do it in Atlanta, New York, Seattle in other cities, then this voice becomes relevant. And I think I think that's the biggest thing is to um, the dia the platform up takes the voice of the diaspora very seriously and our our contribution to changes in Bosnia. 
considering the strength of the diaspora and so many people out there, and not just the numbers game, but the economic strength of the diaspora, why hasn't anybody from Bosnia ever reached out like that and tried to connect with the diaspora, you know, knowing that there's yeah. such a might out there? I mean, are they afraid of the diaspora? Well, they can't even get out of the airport. The airport is not functioning. It's like the whole the whole place is a mess. Yeah. It's, you, you, you're, they're, they're just trying to deal with their own nonsense there. Okay. So what's the game plan? And you're going to go back to ground zero here in St. Louis. What's the game plan of the chapter in the St. Louis region to, I guess, get people registered? What's the time frame? What are some of the, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, working some goals since you guys get yeah. going right now. So next elections are in two years, uh, which seems like a long time away, but it's it's not when you consider the bureaucracy that you have to go through. So the main thing is to get people registered uh, with either a Lichna Karta or to get uh, their passports so that they then they can vote. Uh, and then once they, you know, each, each election cycle, they publish their requirements for voting or whatever forms they need. So they don't have those available yet, but at least we can register as many people to be eligible to vote as possible. Uh, I think that's our number one goal. And then to uh, engage people in, in that conversation uh, because people really haven't been engaged. I wasn't engaged. Yeah, and if you are working, actually Nedima is working with a Bosnian consulate in Chicago mm -hmm. that they can more often that they want we want them to come to St. Louis more often. Usually they said they come like twice a year, but most of the people don't even know about it. We have people in platform in St. Louis that don't even have Bosnian passports or anything. They I came with the Bosnian that. passport, but uh, they become US citizens and they never renew their passport or any or they don't they, they don't even have an idea how to do it. So and we want to get this question may seem a bit uh, funny coming from me from a lawyer, right? But what is the legal status of Bosnians that have become U.S. citizens and now want to vote, want to get a pa Bosnian passport? Is that even OK, legally speaking, and then wanting to vote in the Bosnian elections? Well, which my understanding is yes, but you should ask. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the answer to I'm that question, to be honest with yeah. you. Because I, I, I probably should should look, look into something like that. But uh, I know once we become U.S. citizens, we kind of just say, hey, we're going to have our hands off from all the other you know, countries and then governments that we were involved with. Uh, and I don't know if there is a uh, dual citizenship between you know, Bosnia and the United States, which would, I guess, allow you to have you know, a, a travel document, a passport from Bosnia as well. So I don't know the answer to this question. Yeah. Be, that and, and a lot of other people don't don't know either. There, are, there's so much misinformation and lack of knowledge that's being distributed by anyone in a simple way about this whole process. Mm -hmm. For example, say you own a piece of land in Bosnia, and um, you're a Bosnian citizen, um, but your kids aren't Bosnian citizens, mm -hmm. and then you rescind your Bosnian citizenship. You own, you lose all ownership of that land there. If you rescind your Bosnian citizenship, if you don't have anyone to, <laughs> that's kind of and that's kind of the, the, what I what I always say. Like we don't have to rescind our Bosnian citizenship to become U.S. citizens. I know in Germany it's a different ballgame. Mm -hmm. If you want to become a German citizen, mm -hmm. you have to go to Bosnian consulate and say I'm Remember done that. with you guys, mm -hmm. and then go to the German, you know, and then they say you know they'll give it to you. Here you don't have to do that. That's why I'm kind of like you know you know. I, I don't know the answer to those questions. So I guess something to, to look into and kind of like get some get some good information to our uh, community. Yeah, 30, 30 years later, we need that information. Yeah, yes. seriously. But when it comes to you guys, obviously are in, in the early stages of organizing yourself in the St. Louis region. So how can people get involved? That's a great question. So we, we make it pretty convenient. We meet uh, every two weeks on uh, Sunday at the Bosnian American Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. We meet from 10 to 12 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, and we just keep it at that meeting so that we continue the ball rolling, we keep the momentum going. Uh, every time we've met, we've had new people join us. Um, and it's been exciting just meeting the different yeah. people in St. Louis. It's, it's a great, it's a great way. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong when I say this because I've been involved with many, many, you know, organizations and groups in the St. Louis area yeah. ever since I first arrived here. 
And one of the biggest issues that I always saw with those groups is there's a lot of meetings and there's just no work being done. Yeah. Okay. So the question for you is what is the next concrete step that you guys are, are going to take to get people registered to vote? That, that's great. So um, as Slaja mentioned, we've been in touch with the consulate in Chicago. We'd like to organize an event where they come uh, to St. Louis where it's more public, where people actually know that they're here. Apparently they had a recent event in March. I never heard about it. I don't know if you did. Consulate uh, in St. Louis, where we can uh, help people take care of their paperwork beforehand. And if they have questions about how to get registered, they can come and do those questions then, or perhaps they can finish their fingerprinting process at that time. Uh, and then, you know, thankfully we have the uh, 15th uh, um, uh, annual um, Bosnian Festival coming up in September. Uh, and we'll have a stand there as well. And uh, possibly we can get the consulate. We don't have any confirmation on that to come, um, which would be a great opportunity for them to reach as many people as possible. And then give, give straightforward information about how to get registered to vote. Um, I think that's that's the early part and early goals, and to get as many people to, to do it. Just the vote. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the consulate has not really been that cooperative as much as you guys would like it to be, correct? I, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't be too quick to, to judge them. I, I think I've only had one real conversation with with uh, the, the head there, and, and they, were, they were receptive to our to our goals and think it's a noble cause, but you know, it's a matter of action being done. So we'll, we'll judge a base off of that. Let's take the consulate out of the you know equation. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I want to get registered tomorrow to vote. Yeah. Do you guys know what I need to do? We're actually, we have a document that we're preparing with every single question, every single scenario that you have to go through okay. to, to vote because everyone is in a different scenario. For example, some people don't have their, um, their birth certificates at all. You know, they burnt. You know, when they when they left their house, so they have to obtain those. Other people, you know, they you know they were maybe born here to Bosnian parents. You know, there's there's all sorts of different scenarios that you go through. Um, so uh, we're we're actually compiling a document to simplify that process because a lot of it is is unknown is unknown to me. We're we're new to this. I have zero background in you know, in obtaining a passport and documentation. My my pure pure goal for myself is to have a better Bosnian diaspora and have a better Bosnia and it'd be better Bosnian Americans. Yeah. I think the last time I was trying to get uh, registered, I needed to have a birth certificate. Um, right. And what else was there? Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, confirmation of citizenship, I guess that's what the translation would be. And then what we need to do is send a power of attorney to somebody on the ground in Bielina. That's, you yeah. know, I'm actually from Yanya, but it's in Bielina right. to get me those things. And they could not be older than six months and then fill out the uh, application. And I did, I don't think it ever got, got back to me. It's hard even for a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, yeah. This, is how this, this should yeah. not be hard even for a lawyer at this process. So let me let me ask you this because this is this is another this is another issue that, that, that I've come across. Uh, even a lot of the people that did vote from the diaspora, their uh, voting papers got lost in the mail. Is yeah. that still an issue that's being addressed down there, or? I don't know the details of that, and people will always say, oh, well, you'll register so many people to vote, but they're going to throw all those in the trash, and so what? Well, what I say to those people is let them make a bigger trash pile, then they can't hide it as well, because, you know, we have to do we have to do what we're responsible for. We can't control what, you know, a corrupt politician does in XYZ place, but if they have a, a, a mountain high of 50,000 votes, then we've done our part. Yeah, it's so. going to be hard to hide all them. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah we, can, we can raise up our voice if we only have 300 people voting. Mm -hmm. what, what do you want to change if you only have 300 out of 70,000 just right. in St. Louis? Yeah. So we yeah. don't have a right to raise a voice. And, and you look at, you're a successful lawyer, I'm a successful doctor. Like, okay, those are great. Um, you're a great individual. You did great. And you know maybe you can make a, some change, but really 
neither you nor I nor you are going to change Bosnia by ourselves. The only way that we can change that country is for us to have 50,000 of us in St. Louis say, you know, this is this is how we want to interact with Bosnia. And that's up to up to the 50,000 people to vote on. That's not my choice. Mm -hmm. But people people have that right to be able to vote and they need to be engaged in that process. So if somebody wants to show up the next meeting, when is it? Next meeting is going to be uh, not next uh, Sunday, but the oh. following Sunday from 10 to 12 at the Bosnia American Chamber of Commerce. Doors will be open. Chairs will be out. The, if you are meeting every second and fourth Sunday of the month mm -hmm. at Bosnia Chamber of Commerce down in Gravely. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's all, we're all volunteers. There's no... Yeah. I'm not being paid for this. You're not being paid no, for this. We're taking time off from our families, but you know, we're just sick and tired of people complaining and not taking action and we're doing what little we can. Yeah. You know, each, each one of it's us. gonna take some time. Right. Probably we're not a experts. lot of time, but yeah. it'll it'll get better. Yeah. Well, here it is, folks. If you do wanna get involved, if you do wanna make a difference in, you know, Bosnian life and Bosnian politics, here's your chance next, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday at the Bosnian Chamber of Commerce between 10 and 12. Show up, say hi, see what these guys are all about. And if you like what you see, get involved, you know, lend a helping hand and don't just be sitting around coffee tables and complain about nothing is being done, you know, because that's exactly what a lot of us are about and I'm, I'm admit I'm the first one that's always like talking about something but really not and you know I'm gonna commit if I am able to do it because I meant to get involved sooner but you know I'm gonna commit right here on Facebook live that I'm gonna show up you know the following Sunday unless my wife has got something <laughs> scheduled for me we, uh, yeah. bring her over later. Two weeks yeah later, there's so I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit in yeah. the next uh, 30 days I'm gonna show up to one meeting and kind of see yeah. what you know can be done from from here from St. Louis to improve the situation. We appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. So is there is there anything else that you guys would like to add to this? Is there anything that I didn't ask you that could be uh, discussed? No, I don't think so. Yeah, just um, asking everybody to come up and just be part of our community of yeah. If you want to be a part of Platform, just come over and enjoy some time with us. Yeah. And and we welcome everybody's help, from young to old. We have all sorts of uh, yeah. all members, Definitely. and everybody has a different skill to contribute. Yeah. You know, we had a biker group join us last yeah. time. And, uh, you know, yeah. there's there's everyone has a different skill to to give, and it's valuable. Yeah. Get yeah. involved, folks. Get involved yeah. because that's the only way you're gonna make a difference. So. Thank you very much, the two of you, for stopping by today. I know it's late in the day, and I want to wish, you know, everybody a safe rest of the day, safe rest of the week, and thank you very much for being with us tonight, I guess, already. Guys, have a good one. Yeah. Yeah, thank you.